can. So I think we're recording and I think we're ready. And I'm gonna turn it over to Kaylee Donathan, who is a communication leadership lab assistant here at Grossberg State University. Thank you and welcome everyone. And thanks for joining us for the Appalachian Festival event. I would like to make sure that your name is visible. If not, if you are considered as a guest on your screen, please go ahead and change your name. You can do so by clicking the three little dots in the menu and that way you can change it clearly so we know who you are. And also we'd like to keep the background noise to a low minimum. So if you could just go ahead and mute yourself if you aren't already. And if you have any comments or questions, you may go ahead and put them in the chat as we go through this event. And we are so happy to have you here again today. And welcome to the people who are just now showing up. And I think that is all. Oh, wait, I have one more. There's a little raise your hand button. If you do not know how to use it, you can have, there's a reactions piece down at the bottom or you can click on your name and the participant and click more and you can raise your hand through there as well. Thank you, Kaylee. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome everyone. I'm Dr. Elise Sherwinski. I'm the professor of communication studies and coordinator of the leadership studies minor and our communication leadership lab at Frostburg State University. Welcome to this session of the Appalachian Festival. I wanted to just mention a few things about security in the meeting because we know, unfortunately, we have some challenges in these times, sometimes with that. Uh, we will be monitoring the admittance of people who registered, and we know we might have had some late registrants. So um, Kaylee and I will be taking care of that, and we will lock the meeting in just a bit to just kind of be contained, you know, those that are participating. And um, if we need to end the session early at all, we have the space uh, on Facebook under you know, this event that we could share more information or follow up with discussion more. That was really something that we had to do. Um, I did mention earlier, you're consenting to being recorded. We are recording the session so we can share it later. So, um, you know, I would say just, you know, relax, enjoy. We're gonna have a conversation after a little bit of information sharing. So I just wanted to turn it over to someone who has offered incredible leadership to this effort of creating a community cafe in Allegheny County. Val Llewellyn is someone who I just started to get to know better and I am so glad that I have because she is um, you know, someone offering herself, her time, her energy to help bring people together to try to make something positive happen in our community. So I'll turn it over to you, Val. Are you good? You're back I can't seem you. to unmute. There you go, you got it. Okay, good morning. I am so glad to be here today and thank you, Alicia, for your kind words. We will be discussing the potential of establishing a donate as you can or pay as you can cafe in this area. I am Val Llewellyn and chairperson of the team exploring the idea of the cafe. This session is being co-sponsored by the Allegheny County Human Resources Development Commission, HRDC, and also the Western Maryland Food Council, and will be facilitated by FSU's Communication Leadership Lab and members of the CAFE's Exploratory Committee. Partners in that committee include educators, employees of Western Maryland Health System, local restaurant owners, faith community leaders, and interested community members. We are very excited about this opportunity to share this idea with you and answer your questions about the cafe and how you can get involved. Before we begin, let me introduce representatives of two of our potential partners. I'm not sure um, Wendelin McKenzie is here. She is executive director of HRDC. Wendelin, would you like to say a few words? Good morning. Can everyone hear me? Yes. 
Okay, good. I was having some technological difficulties this morning. Yes, I would. Um, we are so very excited to be part of this potential partnership. And when Val approached me, um, the very first thing that occurred to me and in my thought process is this is going to help us address what we know is a tremendous need in our community, which is dealing with and addressing food insecurity. So it just tied in very nicely with our mission as we strive to eliminate social and economic barriers to help individuals become self-sufficient as well as it ties in nicely with our um, volunteer piece. We work with AmeriCorps in, tar in terms of our retired senior volunteer program. So instantly it triggered with us that this will be an excellent opportunity bo on both ends to meet the need of food insecurity with the individuals and clients that we serve, as well as provide opportunities for volunteering with our seniors. So we are very, very excited. We welcome this partnership and Val, thank you again for thinking of us and reaching out. Thank you, Wendelin. And another potential partner for us is the Western Maryland Food Council. And Sherry Frick is the um, Agriculture and Natural Resources Educator and Treasurer of that group. Is Sherry here? I don't think that we do have Sherry. So I was checking email to see if she was having any issues getting in and I don't see that. So, But I know um, from working with the Food Council that Sherry's been offering tremendous leadership to that effort, which is an amazing sign of how progressive I think our region is to have a Food Council that's trying to work on you know, educating around food security and um, really building a you know strong coalition of, around that effort. So we're sorry, we're missing Sherry, but maybe she'll join us in just a bit. So um, I am gonna have us just pause as we, before we get into some of the information sharing to mention that this is a true civility initiative because it is facilitated through the Communication Leadership Lab. And um, we have Renee Mason here, who um, you know, is coordinating that effort through the Allegheny County Library System. Um, we just wanted to let you know briefly that we're going to use the civility principles to guide this discussion. And before we watch a short video about the model that kind of serves as a basis for the cafe, um, uh, Kaylee's going to just mention briefly an overview of some of those principles to guide our conversation. Thank you. So a few principles that I love and I will always pay attention close to is always assert yourself and apologize if you go out of hand or if you take something out of context. Pay attention closely, active listening for sure, and acknowledge others when you are being spoken to because if you don't acknowledge them, you do not, they don't know that you're paying attention or that you're understanding what they're saying. So always be sure to be respectful, kind, and welcoming. Thank you. Okay. So we are going to next take a look at a brief video. Can you hear that sound okay? always had hunger in America and that's because there's always been poverty in America and traditionally the poverty rate is about 10 percent but in the last decade we've seen that increase to about 14 15 percent and in some communities it's as high as almost 29 30 percent so because of that scholars are calling for innovative and collaborative ways to address this problem and the one world everybody eats pay what you can nonprofit restaurant model is a response to that call We have as much as any community, we have that cross section of voices and this model works for all of that because what this model is saying, we're just inviting you to be a part of us. We just want you to be a part of our community. We want you to come in, come chop some vegetables with us or come have a meal with us. It's a wonderful model. I didn't think of the model, but I'm certainly appreciative of the model. And for us, it has worked so far quite well, and we're very blessed with a caring community. Hey, that looks great. Uh, how much would you like to donate today, Mary? I would donate $7 today. $7? Okay. Like, 
Mary Pope, your change is $13. Thank you. Farm Cafe is an amazing idea, great way to support your local community and to help support local farmers. And it seems like a great community gathering spot. Every time I come in, every time I pass, it's busy. Welcome to the pharmacy of the future. It is here, it is us. Lynn, I just want to thank you and to actually allow us to be witnesses to, you know, what you've manifested. So, it was once a dream we talked about. It here. was. <laughs> and it was called Seeds. Yeah. yeah, it was called Seeds. I'm just so glad you got to see the cafe and experience a little bit about what we do. And in the beginning, when One World first started, there were a few restaurants out there and economists were really doubtful that it could sustain itself. You know, people paying whatever they want. And the reason they were doubtful is because traditional economic theory leads to the expectation that people will maximize the utility in the market, exploit, pay what you can pricing, and pay nothing. But studies have found that that's not what's happening. There are some for-profit restaurants out there that are trying pay what you can pricing mechanisms, and they're seeing that people pay. I think that pay what you can movement is just part of the flow of human beings being with one another. We have to support one another and we got to include each other. How do we do that so everybody's a part of it? And clearly food, why do we have some people have it and some people don't? It makes no sense. You know, if, you, if you're hungry, if you're not eating, you can't think, you can't act, you can't. It's really difficult to be highly functioning and be hungry at the same time. And so really what we're talking about is helping people get on their feet. It's not a handout, it's a hand up. So what do you think of the food? It's really good. It's good food. How do you feel when people come in the cafe and they say, this is a wonderful concept. And in reality, it's not a concept anymore. It's, it's our lives. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. All right, so that's the model. And here's what we hope to do. I'll turn it back over to Val and Rebecca Vardaman. Shall I, I start? Keep... Are you good? Go ahead, Rebecca. Okay. All right. Um, we have come up with our mission, and I'll read it with you here. The cafe builds community by welcoming all people to be nourished in body and soul. We treat everyone with dignity and respect, regardless of their ability to pay. And I just want to say one thing. It says the cafe, and we'd love to some they put our name in there, wouldn't we? We want it to be the, you fill in the blank. That's one of the things that we need help with is coming up with a wonderful name. And then we also have our vision. If that, there we go. Our Slow. vision. Yeah, that's okay. No, thanks, Alicia. <laughs> um, the vision is to address poverty and food insecurity by providing quality food in a quality setting to all people with dignity and respect, regardless of their ability to pay. And that means this is not a soup kitchen. This is a, this is a restaurant that you would want to go into yourself and have a meal. So the goal right now is to serve one nutritional meal a day, five days a week. We're thinking probably lunch. Usually using locally sourced food and including an educational component. And I think there's more about that later, but we have connected with local farmers 
some of the farmers you see at the farmer's market. And, um, and we hope to get people involved in community gardens. And then we basically want to locate in the central part of town. We want to be in downtown Cumberland, right in that area that where we'll catch the most people, where there's the most traffic and there's transportation people can use to get there. And then we have our core values. And these we're also still working on, and you may have ideas of what, how we can improve on these. But of course, like we've said already, we want to treat all people with dignity and respect. We want to appeal to all people, both those who need help paying or need to volunteer to pay or, and those who can pay fully. Appeal to all people through quality food and a quality setting. We want to connect people with job training related to food and create community through this engagement, uh, through our volunteers, through people who eat in the restaurant and will have chances to meet other people. We want to pro promote sustainable healthiness, good food, collaborate with community partners, and you may have ideas for who possible partners might be. Please share those and emphasize volunteerism. This is a huge volunteer effort, isn't it, Val? We will only ha have two paid staff, and so it's very important that we have volunteers through service, and also we will have policies for fair treatment of the employees that we do have. Thank you. Okay. So I'll give you just a brief history of where we started and where we are today. Um, a small group, I think there were two ladies who stopped at a One World Everyone Eats Pay As You Can restaurant in Danville, Kentucky. They were part of a group that was functioning in Cumberland at the time called Community Gathering Group, which was sponsoring events to help promote peace and um, nonviolence in the area. And they brought this idea back to the community gathering group. It was presented at a Thanksgiving interfaith service. And I got very excited and asked if I could join the group. Shortly after that, I stopped at another pay as you can uh, restaurant in Whitfield, Virginia, and talked for probably an hour and a half to the man who ran that restaurant. He volunteered to come to Cumberland and meet with us and share how he had established the restaurant and um, give us some ideas for getting our setup. He came in fall of 2019 and we had a very nice meeting at the Culinary Cafe with him. After that, the Cafe Exploratory Committee was formed separate from the community gathering group. And our vision has grown from there. As Rebecca said, we decided downtown Cumberland would be the best location because it gave us greatest accessibility to paying customers, which will be very important, as well as those who cannot afford to pay fully for a meal. Um, we want the cafe, as she said, to be welcoming to all people, all walks of life. Give them a chance to gather and share a dining experience together. Currently, we are exploring some sites in the downtown area. Um, we're looking at two right now, but we certainly would welcome any ideas anyone might have. We would like to have a restaurant that already has a kitchen and needs little renovation, if that's at all possible. Um, the pandemic has been very difficult for many businesses, as we all know, and so, it actually turned out to be a silver lining for this group. We contacted several businesses downtown to see if there was some way we could support them during the pandemic. And they actually ended up offering to help us get our restaurant set up. I, I just think this community is just wonderful the way it works together and supports each other. And we were so pleased when those folks came forward. Um, after that, then Nancy Forlifer at the Western Maryland Health System was the one that suggested that we contact HRDC and see if they would be willing to partner with us. And as Wendelin said, they were very excited and supported our idea. 
So right now we're putting together an advisory committee to oversee the running of the cafe and to report to HRDC. We needed an attorney, a CPA and a bookkeeper to name just a few positions and we already have recommendations for them and volunteers who've come forward. We still need a dietitian, a grant writer, and someone to head up fundraising. So if anybody attending this session would be interested in that, we certainly would appreciate you stepping forward. And as Rebecca said, you know, we do want to include an educational component with the restaurant by establishing a community gardening and teaching volunteers to grow food. Some local farmers were exploring a similar idea and have volunteered to be part of our advisory board. Also, Deb Frank, who runs the Culinary Arts Program at ACM and the Culinary Cafe, has expressed interest in using our restaurant to train volunteers in food service skills. We still need to firm up our partnerships and structure before we can begin fundraising, but we will need funds for any renovations that may be needed, purchase of equipment and supplies, and all other startup costs. Once we're ready to open, we will need community volunteers to work in the kitchen, serve food, and help with the daily operation of the restaurant. We are hoping that members of this audience will be interested and share their expertise and time to bring this project to fruition. Thank you. Hey, okay, so we next can have a discussion and I'm amazed. I shouldn't say anything, but we're kind of right on schedule. So we've got some time to talk with each other. And so I did um, assign, if you saw on the agenda, who's gonna ask the question. So Rebecca, you have that first question, if you have that ready. If not, we can help you. I'm not sure. Okay. First, first question, no, I'm not sure what you mean, it's, go ahead. Okay, Kaylee, do you mind asking that one? This is at 10.25. Yeah, that's actually what I was looking for too. Um, Tim, okay. So is there anything to add to this mission or do you have any suggestions for the locations? And that's open for anyone. We invite you to, to discuss. You can raise your hand, you can offer something in the chat and we'll call on you that way, whatever works best for you. Ellen had an idea in the chat you want to lift that up, Ellen? Yeah, um, I have to find my chat again so I can read it. <laughs> Sorry. This is the way we go. We're I can't good. Be, okay. Um, I, I asked, can we add something to the core values segment about the community gardens aspect of the project? And I meant something to the effect of promote reciprocal cooperation with community gardens to encourage a healthy lifestyle for patrons and a community symbi excuse me, symbiosis. That's kind of verbose, but we could boil it down. But I guess what I'm trying to say is I'd like to add something, if we could, to the core values that brings in the community garden aspect and the idea of people who can't afford to pay for their meals can give back by working at one of the community gardens, which then donates some of their produce to the restaurant. So it's a symbiotic relationship and it's, uh, you know, getting people who may uh, be in, in bad circumstances out in the sunlight and the fresh air and doing some physical work and so on. So it's a, it's a symbiosis and that, along with the educational aspect, those are to me two very important uh, parts of this. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a lot like what the, the farmer group that is looking to start a, a community farm in town. And so we might connect with them as well, because I think that's a lot like what they are looking to do. I didn't know about that. That sounds like a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I wanted to bring up, well, I guess I, I don't mean to be 
taking over here, but um, I mentioned that Sherry White, whom I had approached about being the bookkeeper, feels that she cannot currently take it on because she has had to take on the homeschooling of her grandchildren because of the pandemic. Um, but after the pandemic, she may have more availability and we don't know when we're actually gonna get this thing up and running. Um, the second thing was about locations. Um, I'm still waiting for Josh Haravey to set up a walkthrough. He's making connections for us with um, county health inspectors and various other code inspectors and so on to take a look at the space at the senior annex, the annex behind the senior center downtown. So I'm still waiting to hear back from him on that. Um, we've already toured it a couple of times, um, the location committee, and it looks like it has potential, uh, but it would need a great deal of work. So Josh is trying to put together a tour so that we can go through and, and get a better handle on what it would need and how much that might cost. In the meantime, he's also offering uh, his restaurant, the Alleghenia, um, as a space for this, uh, which is extremely generous and he's ex been wanting to do something like this for years um, but there are problems with that too which are are more than anything logistical uh, because of the way the space is arranged and the fact that there's no parking but the space itself is kind of difficult because it involves a lot of uh, stairs and it's kind of tucked away at the top of the building and so uh, those are just some of the avenues that the location committee is exploring Marsha I'm sorry or I should have let you I, I talk about this but anyway um so that's kind of where we are with that on the location committee and i see that lita havens has volunteered to do artwork for us am i taking that right lita and we would appreciate any help you know once we get the space we will need some art definitely to decorate the the uh, restaurant so thank you uh, more than that about I could actually, I am into a lot of um, art associations. And for one, the Western Maryland Watercolor Society have been very active with our library. And I'm sure we could work up some fundraising events where right now we donate a lot of money of our donated art to the library, but we could actually think of other projects that could raise money. And also that, let's just remember, art is the best therapy. It is a way that all of us may not just be serving food, but might just be there as a companion or some other things that they could do. I saw in a restaurant, my friend does that in Europe for the immigrants, and they actually have some tea projects wherein people could just have tea, not a whole meal, but in that session, they talk and also express all the art that they're learning from each other. And I think that could be a project we could also include. Thank you for doing this. Wow, thank you. You have wonderful ideas. And, and I hope I could help. <laughs> could I add, I mentioned in the chat that as far as the finding an accountant and all that, I wonder if there are like local, I don't know, accountant groups, there must be some sort of organization of CPAs and accountants or something like that, that we could go to and say, you know, here's a project and maybe they have people they mentor or, you know, are in training and could need a project. Um, I don't know. So we maybe, already have the volunteer. Well, no, she's, she's iffy right now. No, Larry. Oh, I'm for the CPA. CPA but we still need a bookkeeper. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, Cassie has a question, I see. Um, well, I just wanna say thank you, Lita. Um, Lita is absolutely just the greatest. Um, but I wanted to hear the initial question that kicked off this discussion was about um, potential buildings. Uh, Val was sort of going through the wish list um, in terms of capacity, I'd like to hear what you're thinking. When I, for example, looked at the pictures of um, the One World Cafe, I think that's the name of it, in Wytheville, Virginia, it seems the capacity is uh, conservative, maybe 50 or something like that. 
Um, so I want to hear a little bit about what you think about that, um, which could help guide narrowing down a potential location. Um, and then from there, maybe I'll offer a few suggestions. Yeah, I'm, I will answer on the basis of what we have seen. I belong to Christ Lutheran Church and we serve a monthly free community meal. And it started about six years ago, I think. In the first few months or so that we served meals, we saw maybe 35 people come. We now are serving carryout style, of course, anywhere from 280 to 300 meals when we do the meal service. So I think the need is great in the community. There is a great deal of food insecurity. So I think we need at least a moderate size space that would probably hold at least 50 people at a time, if not more. Marcia has a question. I, I noticed that, <clears throat> I can't think of her last name, Amy, that's the director of the, uh, the food bank here. She has, told me in private conversations that she's really behind this because whether, I don't know if you know it or not, but they daily get um, produce, some from the local farmers and some from the grocery stores. But I shopped there and have all, for years to support some of the programs when I was pastor of St. Paul's and my husband still shops there. So sometimes they will have huge, big cardboard things full of um, various like potatoes or you know all kinds of things like that which i know they're going to be behind our and i wanted to make sure that she's involved at some point in in this because i thought she had volunteered to be but maybe her email is not on there or something to be uh part of our discussion because they always have produce almost always there's very few weeks that go by that there's not a lot of things, tomatoes and peppers and all kinds of things that are just going to rot. They're always trying to give them away to my husband. And he's been, uh, once a month for the last several months, they come in with food boxes that have, like a, they're for a family, that have a bag of potatoes, a bag of sweet potatoes, a bag of apples, a bag of oranges, a stalk of celery, um, all, all kinds of things. Uh, uh, package of tomatoes, all kinds of things. And I would assume that when those things happen, this cafe would be able to um, get some of those. Because I think Amy is going to be somebody that's going to be able to add to our fresh produce thing without any problem at all. A lot of times those things are, I, I don't, they may be going and feeding somebody's hogs or something if, if it's not all picked up on a daily basis. And it's good stuff. You, anybody know Amy's last name? I can't think of it. I do. I do. Her name, this is Wendelin. Her name is Amy Moyer. Moyer. That's right. Mm -hmm. She's very much behind helping us. We need contact information for her. We can add her to the mailing list if we can get that from someone. I can get that for you. She's yeah. a friend of mine and I'm in touch with her. Um, I text her frequently. Her son is my son's best friend. So Okay. And she is on our mailing. She is on our email oh, list. Okay, count. good. Okay, yeah. Okay, good. Okay, I'm going to go on a big limb. So, in thinking about a space for you folks, um, or for us, we should start, I should stop othering you, right? It's us. Um, the first location that comes to mind is the Manhattan Social. It is currently up for sale. Um, however, the current owner, um, his name is Danny Abinijam, uh, who operates the Lebanese Taverna Restaurant Group in the DC area, has offered to allow someone to use the space without owning it um, and to pay only utilities, uh, us, thus no rent. Um, Danny Abinijam actually is uh, an important humanitarian. He's a very close friend of Jose Andres's, and Jose Andres operates the World Central Kitchen. Um, and you may have heard of him, and if you haven't, please Google him. Um, Danny, just last month, for example, uh, he's Lebanese, and when the expo explosion in Beirut happened, 
he traveled there and fed people in uh, Lebanon for, for several weeks. Um, that location is wonderful for many, many reasons. It may be too large. However, it does have, offer a variety of spaces, including a private room in the back, which may be great for those community conversations um, that Alicia described to me when I just, you know, had a chance to sit down and talk to her and Val earlier this week. Um, there is a bar, uh, which I know alcohol is not an element of this group, uh, but it could provide a backdrop for other private spaces as well. Um, I don't know if it's the right move. Uh, I think the cost of the building is, is prohibitive, especially if this group is interested in purchasing a building. Um, but Danny is a reasonable person who will entertain unusual offers. Um, I worked with him for about eight months, and I can tell you that he is community-minded. His friend, Jose Andres, will try to convince him to work with you. Um, and if I can provide any contact information, I'm happy to do that. Um, I, don't, I think there are other locations as well that might work, um, but I don't know that you will find someone with flexibility and um, interest in these kinds of projects. Um, like you would with Danny. Maybe we need to set up a, a maybe we need to set up a meeting with him. A few of us. Is he is he down in the D.C. area generally? Yes, Rebecca. Um, but he does come up here fairly frequently um, to check on the building as it is now vacant um, and. I'm happy, again, to provide that contact information so that maybe you could have a meeting with him. Um, I mean, what do the rest of you think? That's just an idea, but. Yeah, the Manhattan has been mentioned before, you know, and again, it's a, a very large space, but, you know, if he's willing to work with us, we certainly couldn't afford to buy it. But um, someone suggested that he said that he would be willing to provide the space and take a part of the profits, but since we're a nonprofit, I'm not sure how that would work. I'm just gonna pop in here to say that that is exactly the kind of thing that we were hoping to inspire through this session is to, you know, not just kind of give an update on and about the project, but to invite people to just start brainstorming and bringing in these ideas so we can continue to connect and explore together. Um, we are getting close to the end of our time. And so I'm gonna kind of just move us to a final question and just make sure we have a little bit of time to share, you know, what's next or how we hope to, you know, continue to invite you to be part of that effort. Um, we did want to ask uh, what ideas you might have for the name. So, you know, you might need to think on this a little and come back and something really, you know, fabulous will pop in your head later that you can send a message to one of us about. But does anyone have any suggestions right now? And um, in the meantime, I'm gonna kind of bring us up to our final slides just so we can stay on target with our end time right around 10.45. Any suggestions for what we call this cafe? <laughs> we were originally calling it Grace Cafe and that was just based on the fact that the cafe that Marcia and I visited in Kentucky was the Grace Cafe. But, but then we thought, well, that, that name is already taken. Maybe we should come up with something else. And as much as I like that name myself, it, it's a very religious kind of a term. I think I'm not, I'm not sure that it shouldn't be something that's a little more all kind of inclusive. It's a Christian kind of term. I should even specify more specifically. So that's kind of where we started, but it doesn't even have to have the name cafe in it. It could be, and it'd be interesting. You can, I think you can go to the website and look at names of cafes and that might spur ideas. Yeah, I think Lydia Martin suggested the name friends, which kind of had that feel of uh, community involvement and sharing the space in a, a friendly manner. So that's another suggestion. And I see people are posting sunshine, open that arms, does. green space. I like sunshine. That's nice and, oh, they're both good.
But yes, Marcia, I see you have your hand up. No, I already spoke. Okay, I just <laughs> wanted to make sure. Yeah. Um, Kaylee and Alicia, is there a way to capture the, the chatter that we have that information to, because there were some great ideas there and I don't want to forget them. Yes, yeah. you can go ahead and get the chat all set up and I will process it into a Word document and send it out. Perfect, thank you. You're very welcome. Great. Okay, so I just offered in the chat the next planning meeting of, of the cafe will be October 8th at 3 p.m. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, Val and Rebecca, as we close out? I also want to mention um, that link that is for an event is the next event at 11 a.m. that we have. So if anyone's interested in joining us to talk about safety and justice, that's available for you too. Anything else to close us out? Yeah, if anyone is interested in joining our next meeting, if you could maybe add your email contact uh, information to the chat, and then we'll make sure that you get the link to join the next meeting. Sounds good. Anything else, anyone? Okay, thank you for joining us. And we do have that next event coming up. Remember to register and educate you and two to get the vote out. We do wanna make sure we emphasize that. But thank you for being part of this Appalachian mm -hmm. Festival event. Good luck everyone, take care. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you much.